Hello, today we are going to see a nice small example how to commission Lexium 32 with third party motor and this motor will have resolver. So let's begin and first we are going to check hardware configuration then we will see which data is needed for this commissioning and then we will continue with commissioning. So we will use so move latest and latest Lexium 32 DTM we will use Lexium 32 MD30 M2 and resolver card. Additionally, we will use BDH motor, which is legacy motor from Schneider. So technically, whatever is not BSH or BMH motor, which is standard for Lexium 32, is treated as third party motor. And we will connect it with encoder and motor cable. So let's continue and what are the conditions? First of all, when selecting a third party motor and see if it's possible to connect it to Lexion 32, you need to have motor type permanent magnet synchronous motor. Additionally, this motor has to have encoders which are Syncos or Syncos hyperface or resolver. This is what is at the moment possible to connect as a motor encoder to our Lexium 32 drive which with additional encoder card. So next we can check what we need to do and which data we need to properly wire and also commission this combination. So first of all wiring you need to connect motor faces from motor connector with the proper cable to the drive and on drive side it's CN10 and CN11 connectors for motor and for mechanical brake on the motor. Additionally you need to connect encoder, in this case resolver, according to pins on your motor side and also on your resolver side. That's it for this part. When you are finished with wiring you need to have motor and resolver data. So resolver data, you will need pole numbers, transmission ratio, the main things for commissioning, and additionally voltage and frequency for excitation. We will see how this works in when we start the commissioning. When you have your resolver data and you know that you can connect this resolver to our Lexium 32 resolver card, then you need to check the motor data. So because we are using BDH1384K and we are using 230 volt drive, we will use these values for our nominal speed, torque and power. And then additionally, we will need to use technical characteristic of our motor from down here. This is not all the parameters and during commissioning you will see what else we need. So at this point we can start commissioning. We have more or less all the data and now we go to some move. So here we are. The drive is in factory settings and we have to start third party motor commissioning. So what we can do at this moment, we can check third party motor tab. And at this point it shows us that we need to set encoder to, to our motor encoder and select type of the encoder. At the moment the drive is in error 5200 which means that there is no motor on a standard encoder input which drives by a default expects. At this point you go to parameter list and before we begin first we will disable limit switches. One thing to mention during this operation is that during commissioning of third party motor one of the requirements is that the motor is disconnected mechanically from the application so you need to have motor with no uh, nothing on the shaft end then you go to resolver card and then you set usage motor and type needs to be resolver now at this point drives is showing us that he has startup message and when we save this data to EPROM we 
see what is the message and the message is that parameter has changed and we need to restart the drive so this is exactly what we are going to do we need to restart the drive device user function and restart the drive now when you restart the drive you have a little bit longer procedure because cpu in the drive has to reboot and then additionally so move needs to reconnect once again to a drive to have new set of parameters and so on and so on because he is re-establishing the connection if you check your display on a drive it's a different error and it's 7134 which means that its third party motor has incomplete motor configuration now this is very good sign because that means that we have access to our third, third party motor tab and we can start to input some parameters if we click on third party motor tab first of things we show us that we need exclusive access from our commissioning tool so let's provide it we pro provide exclusive access and at this point we can start to enter motor data brake data resolver data now let's start to enter the data from our technical data sheet so 1200 rpm maximum motor current nominal current after nominal current we need to continue stall current to enter then we will have maximum line voltage which is 230 volts because we have 10 pole motor that means it's five pole pairs now next parameter is very interesting in the technical characteristics you can see that this parameter is in newton meters and here you need to enter it in newton centimeters this is one warning you need to be careful about the units which you put parameters and which are displayed in your technical characteristics from your motor so be very careful not to mess and to mix the units and to input a proper unit so here is 18.8 newton meters but because it's in newton centimeters we need to put 1880 so let's do it next you need to put resistance of your windings and also impedance we have here just one impedance if you don't have both directions then you need to put the same value for impedance what you have in your technical characteristics so let's put first resistance and then two times same value for the impedance now after that you have one parameter which is field rotation you do this if your motor does not turn in correct direction we you need to put emf constant then i squared t you put 1000 milliseconds for this motor it's usually between 1000 and two and a half thousand milliseconds mainly to protect the brake now you need to put maximum speed and at this point this information is not mentioned in the technical characteristic but it's visible on the motor nameplate so please use that value from a motor nameplate and this value is just to protect the motor from mechanical speed to protect the bearings and also to protect the magnets on the rotor because centrifugal forces can detach the magnets from the rotor and for this motor maximum speed is 6000 rpm and at this point i'm searching for this information and i find it in the motor nameplate as i said so when you put 6000 rpm inside one more parameter which is we can say really crucial for good operation of your motor is your rotor inertia 
uh, this motor has I we can say medium rotor inertia size which is very good with operation with higher inertia load so when you finish your data input of your motor now we see 6000 rpm and then from data sheet you put inertia of your rotor you can continue to holding brake this motor does not have holding brake so we'll skip it and then you have to input the parameters for resolver it's two pole resolver and that's why we have one pair poles and for excitation you have to put 1000 but minimum here is 3000 so we'll use 3000 hertz that's it now you can follow the procedure down there from one to five click download to transfer parameters to a device when you click download it asks you are you sure can you re please recheck your parameters etc then you press ok and then you get startup message and in some time you will get the message that it's successfully transferred here it is you confirm now at this point i would remind you that you need to restart the drive but you can do it like this or you can press on a second part of this commissioning number two restart the drive which is mandatory in this situation is mandatory to click restart the drive and here you will see that we restarted the drive now we can see that drive is not anymore in a fault or in any error but the commissioning requires us to press this button so we will have to do it one more time just to repeat one more time during another restart of our drive the procedure on number three so will require test movement and once again it's mandatory during this test movement that there is no load on motor shaft so please keep it clear also you will see that this movement is just to check wiring and the direction and it can be a little bit violent because still we did not set our resolver inside the drive to act properly on a position of the magnets this will be done in phase four so now we are restarting one more time a drive and you will see that we will have available third step which is testing a movement and also during this test you will see that the drive sorry motor will do a violent movement it will little bit little jump to another position let's see it here it is so just be careful not to touch it or touch the shaft be on a safe distance from the motor after this is done you can go to step four and do wake and shake which will set the offset required now motor will do slight movement and set the offset which will be visible after this is done you click on point five and it will ask you to download parameters one mo more time with adjustment of offset value and at this point you need to again restart the drive and then you can make a test run if the test run is good your third party motor commissioning is finished so let's restart the drive we can see that it's not ready now after the drive restarts we will try to do some simple movement like jog in one or the other direction so what you need to do is enable power and then operate your operating screen choose your operating mode and try to move it during our rotation we will also see that our encoder data will change according to movement one side 
or in another side so we can watch actual position value turn the power on power is enabled and now we will use continuous movement to move in one and another direction one direction another direction so we can conclude that this motor is working properly at this point you can attach your motor to your application and do tuning of your application that's it thank you